From Software is a video game development and publishing company based in Tokyo. Founded by Naotoshi Zin in November 1986, the company developed business software before releasing their first video game, Kingsfield for the PlayStation in 1994. The company would go on to achieve breakout success in the 2010s with the release of Demon's Souls and Dark Souls in 2011, the latter being the first entry in a trilogy whose success led to the creation of a subgenre of games known as Souls-likes. Most of these games are often put on lists for some of the best games of all time, the keyword being most. <coughs> looking at you, Dark Souls 2. Today we'll be looking at the masterpieces of From Software and how From Software is potentially one of the best video game development companies of all time. Dark Souls released on September 22nd, 2011. The game takes place in the Kingdom of Lordan, where the players assume the role of a cursed undead character, who begins a pilgrimage to discover the fate of their kind. I won't be going too deep on any of the lore from the games, but if that's what you're into, then Vati might be your guy. A port for Windows featuring additional content, known as the Prepare to Die edition, was released in August 2012. This edition was also released for consoles under the subtitle Artorius of the Abyss in October of 2012. Dark Souls has been cited as one of the best games of all time. Critics praised the combat, intricate level design, and use of flavor text. However, the game's difficulty received mixed reviews, with some criticizing it for being too unforgiving. Dark Souls would also start a trend that would continue in all Soulsborne games in some way or another, the bonfire system. Bonfires are scattered across the world and serve as checkpoints for the levels. By resting at a bonfire, the player is healed to max health and regens the Estus flasks. Dark Souls employs a minimalist storytelling to convey its plot and lore. Most of the story is given to the player. Most of the story is given to the player from NPC dialogue, flavor text from items, and world design. Now, as I said, I won't be going too deep on any of the lore, but I will do a condensed rundown of the plot, minor area, and boss spoilers ahead. The opening cutscene establishes the premise of the game. Dragons once ruled the world during the Age of Ancients, a primordial fire known as the First Flame manifests within the world, establishing a distinction between life and death and light and dark. Four beings find Lord Souls near the First Flame, granting immense power. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, Nido, the First of the Dead, the Witch of Isolith, and the Fruit of Pygmy. Gwyn, Nido, and the Witch use their new power to destroy the dragons and take control over the world while Furtive Pygmy is said to be forgotten, and thus begins the Age of Fire. Over time, the first flame begins to fade as humans rise in power. Gwyn sacrifices himself to prolong the Age of Fire. The main story takes place around the Second Age of Fire, at which point humanity is said to be afflicted with an undead curse, related to a flaming circular symbol on their bodies known as the Dark Sign. Those humans afflicted with the undead curse perpetually resurrect after death and eventually lose their minds, a process referred to as hollowing. Dark Souls suffered from a severe issue. Others consider it not so severe, others do. Once the player reaches Anne Orlando and defeats Ornstein and Smo, the game gets a little stale. Personally, it comes down to the much lazier level design, boss design, and poor enemy placement. Luckily, the game has a last minute redemption, with the final boss, Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. This is not only an amazing boss fight, but he, in my opinion, has one of the best boss music in uh, all of gaming. In fact, it's so good, it's been playing this whole time. Dark Souls was a good start to a franchise. A bit of a rocky game, but no doubt in my mind, is it one of the greats. Next up, is Dark Souls 2. Now I haven't finished Dark Souls 2, and that is because I just do not like it. I don't like the sluggish combat, I personally don't like the UI, I don't really like the areas, and the hitboxes are GARBAGE. Luckily FromSoft redeemed themselves in 2015 by releasing an absolutely legendary game, Bloodborne. Developed by From Software and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation 4, and sadly, only the PlayStation 4. Bloodborne follows the player's character, a hunter, through the decrepit, gothic, Victorian-era-inspired city of Yarnum, 
whose inhabitants are afflicted with a blood-borne disease, which transforms the residents into horrific beasts. Attempting to find the source of the plague, the player's character unravels the city's mysteries, while fighting beasts and eventually cosmic beings. Combat is fast-paced and requires an offensive approach. The player character is agile and can dodge attacks while strafing around locked-on enemies. The new risk-reward style of gameplay is heavily emphasized through Bloodborne's new rally system, which allows the player to recover portions of lost health by striking an enemy within a small window after taking damage. Director Hidetaka Miyazaki explains that this represents the player's will to continue after successfully striking an enemy. Bloodborne is also the only Soulsborne game with guns. Quite American for a Japanese game. Bloodborne takes place in Yarnum, a decrepit gothic city known for its medical advances around the practice of blood ministration. Over the years, many travelers journey to the city seeking remedy to cure their afflictions. Player character journeys to Yarnum seeking the cure, something known as pale blood, for an unspecified illness. However, upon arriving in the city, it is discovered that Yarnum is plagued with an epidemic illness that has transformed most of its citizens into bestial creatures. The player must navigate the streets of Yarnum during the night of the hunt, and overcome its violently deranged inhabitants and horrifying monsters to stop the source of the plague and escape the nightmare. A DLC called The Old Hunters was released on November 24th, 2015. It takes place within a world where the hunters of the past are trapped. Bloodborne received universal acclaim. Daniel Tack of Game Informer praised the game's unsettling atmosphere and aesthetic visuals, which he stated had brought horror to life. Everyone loved Bloodborne, and pretty much everyone still does to this day. Bloodborne was certainly a good switch up from Dark Souls 2, and now all we need is either a Bloodborne PC port, Bloodborne 60 FPS, or God, please, Hidetaki, Miyazaki, please, just give us Bloodborne 2, please! Moving on, we got one of my favorite Soulsborne games of all time, Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 was released in 2016, and it truly feels like if they took what they've learned from DS1, Dark Souls 2, and Bloodborne, and just put it all together into this masterpiece of a game. Dark Souls 3 really perfected the Soulsborne formula. Most of Dark Souls 3's areas are amazing. I say most because, of course, we have Fair and Keep. And Orlando also makes a reappearance, bringing nostalgia to many longtime fans. Set in the Kingdom of Lothric, a bell has rung to signal the first flame, responsible for maintaining the Age of Fire, is dying out as has happened many times before. The coming of the Age of Dark produces undead, cursed beings that rise after death. The Age of Fire can be prolonged by linking the flame, a ritual which great lords and heroes sacrifice their souls to rekindle the first flame. However, Prince Lothric, the chosen linker for this age, abandoned his duty and chose to watch the flame die from afar. The bell is the last hope for the Age of Fire, resurrecting previous Lords of Cinder, heroes who linked the flame in past ages, to attempt to link the fire again. However, all but one Lord did their duty. Meanwhile, Sullivan, a sorcerer from the painted world of Ariandel, wrongfully proclaims himself Pontiff and seizes power over Irithyll of the Boreal Valley. You play as the Ashen One, an undead who failed to become a Lord of Cinder, and thus is called an Unkindled. You rise and you must link the flame by returning to Prince Lothric and the Defiant Lords of Cinder to their thrones in Firelink Shrine. Dark Souls 3 is amazing, and the DLC is too. I won't be going over them here, but they are sure great. A lot of people say it's even better than the main game. Dark Souls 4 would just feel like a violation to the franchise, and I'm glad they ended it on a good note. After Dark Souls 3 perfectly ended the trilogy, FromSoft had to come up with something new, and that thing ended up being 2019's Game of the Year, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. The game follows a shinobi known as Wolf, who attempts to take revenge on a samurai clan that imprisoned him and kidnapped his lord. Following the Sengoku period, Ishin Ashina sees control of the land of Ashina. During this time, a nameless orphan is adopted by the wandering shinobi known as Owl, 
Owl then names the boy Wolf, and he trains him in the way of the shinobi. Two decades later, Ashina is on the brink of collapse due to the now elderly Ishin. Falling ill and the interior ministry, a group set on unifying Japan, steadily closing in. Desperate to save his clan, Ishin's adoptive grandson, Genichiro, seeks the immortal divine heir, Kuro, in hopes of using the dragon heritage in his blood to create an immortal army. Wolf, now a full-fledged shinobi and Kuro's bodyguard, fights Genichiro and loses both Kuro and his left arm. However, being immortal, Wolf survives and is found by a retired shinobi known as the Sculptor. The Sculptor nurses Wolf back to health and gifts him a prosthetic arm. Sekiro is truly amazing, but because of its gameplay style being very focused on parrying and overall just different, makes it really hard for me to call it a real part of the Soulsborne franchise. Following the release of Sekiro, there was no sign of any sequel or a DLC. And unfortunately, a DLC still hasn't been announced yet. And I personally don't think it's ever gonna happen. But in the year of Sekiro's release, another game was announced. During the Xbox Game Conference at E3 2019, Elden Ring was announced. And it was announced with no more but a cinematic trailer. After years of waiting, many wondered if Elden Ring would ever be released. But on February 25th, 2022, Elden Ring was released to the public. Elden Ring was like no other from Soft game. The gameplay style borrowed heavily from Dark Souls 3, but a huge leap that FromSoft took was very risky. In the past, From Software's games have been very linear, but with Elden Ring, FromSoft decided to switch to an open world instead of a linear game. Many thought this wouldn't work as From Software doesn't have any experience with open world games, but luckily they succeeded. Elden Ring was given 9s and 10s across the board. Many considered it to be the best game of all time. Metacritic gave it a 96 and PC Gamer gave it a 90. Elden Ring was a masterpiece. And as of February 2023, the game has sold over 20 million units. At the end of 2022, we had a fearsome battle between the two games that people thought should win Game of the Year. It was between God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring. Elden Ring ended up winning and nominating none other than Bill Clinton. My reformed orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. I didn't know Bill Clinton was chill like that. And pretty recently, from Software announced the Elden Ring DLC by the name of Shadow of the Earth Tree. I am very excited to see where they take Elden Ring next. Personally, kind of a hot take. I think Elden Ring is the best Soulsborne game of all time, by far. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me a long time to record and edit, so dropping a like and maybe subscribing would help me out so, so much. Comment down below which one of the Soulsborne games is your favorite, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.